All right, so I want to start this video with some tool repair because um, yesterday when I was getting ready to put up soffit, the um, uh, Brad gun I used, this is a Porter cable, but uh, Porter cable, Black & Decker, Boss Ditch, you know, there's a couple other brands that are all um, from the same parent company. Um, in this gun, I got about uh, six or seven boards up and then uh, the trigger, um, was just making a chirping noise and the gun wasn't firing. Uh, when, when you get that symptom with any type of nail gun or brad gun, it's almost always a problem with the uh, valve inside of the trigger. And so I pulled that apart and what I found was that uh, what was formerly O-rings or packings, um, whatever material they used, it just did not hold up over time and it was all gummy and, and sticky and uh, Basically, it was letting air pass the valve inside of the trigger instead of diverting the air into the head of the gun where it could drive the piston down. So I was able to um, get a parts diagram for this gun. This is the Porter Cable DA250C and uh, determined uh, that you couldn't get new O-rings, but you could order a whole new trigger assembly. Um, and those are readily available online. Uh, this is the uh, the part I got. I got this from Amazon. It was about uh, 12 or 13 bucks. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to read this, but that is the, uh, the part number. And that's uh, Porter Cable part number. I, I have a feeling this is a third party part, uh, just the way it came packaged, but there's not a whole lot to these, so I don't think it matters if you get the um, uh, genuine part. Um, so now it's just going to be a matter of putting this trigger valve back into the gun and putting things back together. And I want to do that quickly. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put some silicone grease on these, these O-rings. And uh, whether that's needed or not, that'll help them slip into the gun without any friction. And that'll help avoid damage. And uh, silicone grease is generally safe and good for for o-ring material um so now we can go ahead and, and slip this back into the gun and i have a feeling i really just need to press it into place that's pretty much it i think um, and i'm going to look at the old part just to get some guidance Yeah, that's pretty much it. It just slips in there. Um, and so at this point, um, looking at this valve here, I don't think there's, okay, there's, there's basically, there's two recesses um, in this little housing that are going to uh, let these roll pins slide past and hold it in. So really the only thing you got to do is make sure that is lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and um, eyeball that the best I can and then put these roll pins uh, back in. I guess I'll drive them gently at first if I can find my hammer. Okay. Just kind of get those started. Them and and uh, that's basically going to hold that, that trigger in. Those went in pretty easy, surprisingly. So let me drive those all the way. So that they're even, so I can go a little bit, a little bit more. So that <clears throat> should do it. So that, that assembly is held in there now. Um, it should be good there. The trigger valve still, still works. I can rotate the safety. So we're, we're good here at this point. So I guess the last thing I need to do is put this uh, trigger back in. The actual physical trigger and um, 
So it looks like we got a spring. Okay, so that's really just gonna pop in there. And that is held in by another pin. Let's see, okay, that needs to come up from the other side. popped through and you probably can't see but the pin pops through here and uh, these are held in by just these really teeny rubber grommets um, that do not look too too sturdy so I'm going to just put a little bit of grease on that guy just to give it give it a chance of going back on without breaking I'm amazed it didn't break when I pried it off but yeah you can just push that back on and that that just holds the end of that pin. And then we get our trigger. And that is working as like expected. If I put the safety on, it works. So I think this is ready to go back into action now. So uh, we can get this guy back outside and see how it does. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up for today's video. Um, I got most of the soffit knocked out on this uh, edge of the roof. Um, you know, now that I can see it, it looks really nice. The stain has a really nice kind of a honey color. And I think that's gonna go really good with uh, the white trim that's gonna come along uh, the edge, uh, the dark brown uh, fascia, and then the dark brown uh, brackets that are gonna go up underneath this. So I think it's gonna be a nice combination of colors. Um, I guess I want to point out a few things before we close. When I was putting this up, I'm really careful to get this outer edge lined up flush with the subfascia. Uh, that means when I put on the, the hardy 
to, to cover the fascia, I'm going to have a nice tight uh, joint going down the line. I may come back and put a little garnish trim on the inside here. I haven't decided yet, but I really wanted uh, this line to be nice and, and straight and, and snug. On the inside though, uh, I, I made sure I left room for adjustment with a gap and that's going to be covered by the siding which is going to come up and butt up against the soffit and then the, uh, the trim band board at the top there so you'll never see that gap and that just gives me you know a little bit of a slop so that i can get this edge uh, nice and tight um, i did stop short <coughs> of turning this corner here for a couple reasons uh, one is that i ran out of boards um, the way i'm set up here i don't have a whole lot of space so i, I had all these laid out to for staining and um, wanted to get these up so I can cut a new batch of boards and get those stained and so I can move on to that now and, and uh, keep moving up uh, this gable end but more importantly when you get to the corner um, if I continued with this width of board I would have had a, uh, a standard board and then a real skinny board and I don't like to put skinny boards at corner joints so what I'll do is I'll probably uh, see if I can fish out a wider board to go at that joint uh, or maybe you know trim this down a little bit narrower so I'll have two medium boards but I need to work that out and uh, I'll, I'll do that when I cut the next batch of boards for stain so uh, I think that's going to wrap things up uh, for today uh, glad I got that brad gun working and I can actually show you putting the soffit up instead of just talking about it like we did in the previous video uh, so until next time thanks for watching